They are sensing the mood of the people. And today, on the issue of corruption, Anna Hazare and Baba Ramdev, they are in a way the icons in which people visualize and they aspire for a change in the situation. So because of that people's pressure, government is keen to solve the problem so that it may not have its own spillover effect. And that, uh, why should they talk to BJP? Because BJP has lost that uh, moral strength to combat corruption and to provide counters for the corruption. Instead, uh, Baba Ramdev and Nahazari, they have got more moral authority to talk about this. And people have got faith in them. So naturally, they are the genuine, though non-political, a political opposition to the ruling class. They haven't. They have. That is why they could uh, have, they initiated the talks also, which Annaji also responded in a very democratic manner. And now there, uh, definitely there was to, bound to be this, this stalemate because these two contentious issues with regard to Lokpal bill, one is inclusion of judiciary and another is inclusion of prime minister. Uh, they were the contentious issues since the beginning. In my view, these things should have been sorted out earliest. But now this lingering on, as it always happens, the stale, status quoist, corrupt state and state machinery. They always uh, try to linger to tire out the people through negotiations. That's a strategy usually adopted. It's a far-fetched idea, but since the beginning, when I took the study leave, I was expected to study the impact of globalization in society, polity, economy and culture, and if needed, providing the alternatives. So with that in mind, when my study leave was over, my recommendations uh, were such that I first involved myself in academic and constructive activities, then educational activities leading to some systemic change. So picking up those very issues, which may have a long-range impact also with respect to systemic change. And that included two things more on my part as commitment. One, bringing back politics to the rails of issues and values rather than getting it further degenerated into crass power game itself, unscrupulous power game. And second was, I feel since all the principal political parties are thought-wise pro-rich and pro-foreign, there is a need to occupy the space first of opposition that, will, that would be pro-Bharat and pro-poor. With that idea and commitment in my mind, naturally, I would have contributed in this respect too. So I felt corruption and this illegal money stashed abroad, they are the issues which one, if takes up, that will ultimately lead to systemic change and uh, transformation of society Polity, economy, too. I don't know about Baba Ramdevji. Baba Ramdevji has uh, firmly and clearly stated that he doesn't look beyond this movement and agitation. He has also made it amply clear that he is no way starting any political party. So about him, I have nothing to say. But about myself, definitely I am to state that. Uh, uh, I am determined to bring back politics back on the rails of issues and values and I will not allow it just to be a merely crass power game. And secondly, I definitely feel myself committed to help out for the emergence of a pro-Bharat and pro-poor political force. What will exactly be the shape as a political party or a combination like a front or a loose confederation of many such groups? Which, uh, who can work out minimum common programs in the interest of the poor. That's what I feel. Emotionally, those who are nationalists, those who are concerned with the interest of the poor, definitely they will be on this side. That's how I feel. But uh, how much will they be active or passive? I don't know. It is for them to decide for themselves. But I am clear about it.
So, unfortunately, uh, I am vindicated to see that uh, corruption and crime have assumed globalized proportion. And that is why to tackle the corruption issue also, now that there is a talk of United Nations provisions of money laundering, so that may be curbed and cooperation may be sought with other countries too. So that is natural to happen. Because uh, if values of human life get trampled upon just by lust of money, consumerism and permissiveness of life itself. So these things are natural corollaries in which corruption, hawala, deals, big projects, big deals, big commissions, big purchases, international deals. So the internationalization of this uh, capital flow that further helps this illegally tainted money to be stashed abroad in tax havens. So tax havens is the natural effect of the pro-globalization policies, not considering the needs of the people, but just profit being the motive. I don't say that, but one should understand that if a state as an instrument was imperfect, so also would market be. And I think in the coming era, since 200 years now, economics has tried to govern society, polity and culture. Now the time is in that uh, culture takes over and culture tries to govern economy, polity and also society. That would be the idea which would be in, in the future. And in that context, uh, Bharat reigns supreme because its cultural capital is unsurpassed and unsurpassable by other nations. So they have given goodbye, they forbid goodbye to ideology and idealism and just ended up as party of candidates for power. Power instead of being an instrument for social transformation is just being visualized merely as the goal itself. So if that be so, all kinds of unscrupulous, unethical combinations uh, would be tried and that's what happened. So the, there is a disconnect between the leadership as well as the common cadre and supporters. Supporters want, want the party to go in a particular dire direction, but the party leadership is so hydra-headed, so ambiguous, so conflicting within each other, so much ambition clashes are there. So nothing much can be hoped. Therefore, as far as a responsible opposition is concerned, I psychologically have rejected BJP from my mind. It is all logical, it is all natural. Nothing yes, much can be talked huge upon. Infighting. So there can be infighting, some more contenders will be thrown up, some will be pushed aside. All this will continue, this game will continue. Because if uh, the party has lost its goal and uh, lost the responsibility aspect of politics and just treats politics only to enhance its own economic, financial status and uh, social recognition, then all these things are bound to happen. Nothing unexpected. I have still not rejected him. But one thing is certain. What can work in Gujarat may not be the all India phenomenon to be copied elsewhere. Because socio-historical perspective of that section of Bharat is also to be taken into account. The highly urbanized state of Gujarat having the most and the most widest exposure towards other countries in the globe also provides a certain direction of aspirations too and responses of the people are guided by those aspirations. So what can work well in Gujarat need not work well in Uttar Pradesh or Bihar. One has to take that also into account. So whosoever has emerged because of the special concept, for example, Thira Chauhan was saying that uh, Gujarat sees 11% growth rate, whereas uh, Maharashtra 4.3. But one should understand the same cannot be performed in Maharashtra even if Gujarat chief minister comes to Maharashtra and vice versa too, if Prithviraj Chauhan goes to Gujarat, Gujarat has got its own social responses and Maharashtra has got different types of social responses. The kind of austerity, the kind of hard work in the regions of Maharashtra agriculture, their experience and the way they went into cash crop agriculture, that is now having its own downhill effect. Whereas in Gujarat, it was a different case. 
in the country as you know there are 127 eco agro climatic zones so the success and failure of agriculture will depend upon whether you, have, you are in tune with those eco agro climatic uh, conditions and aspects I don't know exactly what kind of politics because uh, vote politics is a holistic phenomenon. Congress people, they are so much worried and they are also sad that they are not able to encash and play the role of effective opposition in Gujarat. Though, according to them, there are so many burning issues which they, can have, they could have taken up as an opposition political party, but they, they failed to act as an effective oppos opposition because they perhaps lacked proper leadership at the state level. And there are differences also between Hindi speaking states and non-Hindi speaking states also. The state leader has to be able to communicate well in that language also of that region. So all these aspects also play in politics. I don't want to single out Sri Arun Jaitley neither Srimati Sushma Swaraj, but the whole psychology and the bent up of mind of the whole party leadership itself is such that for them only electoral gains matter, neither the ideology nor the idea idealism. So nothing has been done in this regard to improve the party on the basis of ideology as well as idealism. So electoral gains if the only goal, then you are presenting saffron congress in the place of tricolor congress. So people will try that there is nothing to choose between them. So they may choose Congress as it happened in Assam especially when BJP lost the opportunity to raise the issues of infiltrators in Assam. Because they thought that in the wake of a political situation arising in Assam in which no party would get majority, they would have ganged up with some other groups to form government. So for that low key approach to infiltration was counterproductive for their electoral performance. I don't know, neither I have applied my mind. It's for them to think. Country doesn't wait for any particular political party, be it BJP or Congress. I know that uh, if millions of swayam sevaks are there spread all over the country, so this marginal one or two or few cases or incidents cannot tarnish the image of RSS, which is basically service oriented, which is basically socio-cultural. I don't say that at all. I have not said that also even now. There is, I have not said anything which can lead you to this conclusion. I say always that uh, RSS is wedded to nationalism and their base is service activities. And that's how their image is cultivated for the performance of last 80 years. So if any such allegations and accusations are heaped upon some of the RSS and Sevaks, which are yet to be proved in the court, that doesn't damage the image of RSS. That's what I want to state. Uh, right wing you left wing they are all euphemism that's what I feel they are not that much relevant these phrases don't carry much meaning as far well as Bharat is concerned but as you have asked I can just say that uh, the whole space which is the vast majority of Bharatiyas that needs that warrants a political force which has to be essentially pro Bharat neither pro-Russia, pro-America, nor pro-China, but pro-Bharat in its approach of thought process. And pro-poor, those who can take care of the miseries and the griefs of nearly 90 crores of Bharatiya people. There is total insensitivity, there is so total callousness, there is total irresponsible state of affairs going on in which state is ranged against the people of Bharat. That's how I have seen now. The whole state machinery is used to vacate 
Adivasis from their inhabitants for no reason, just blaming them to be Naxals or supporters of Naxalism. Just to pave way and facilitate the cleaning of the whole terrain for big industrialists. That's how I am seeing the situation in which uh, there is a great disconnect, large disconnect between people and power. So to correct that imbalance, there is a need of a political force which is essentially pro-Bharat and pro-poor. And all such forces who may be small also, they should come unite on the basic issues concerning those who are poor, downtrodden, helpless. There are some individuals in the parliament who have to be, and in all the parties there are, they are present. So keeping them also on this side we have to think and new types of convergences have to be uh, evolved and made efforts also to be made efforts in that direction so that's a kind of political work which needs attention i am very much alive to that what, what and as far as the communist parties are concerned now historically they have been presented an opportunity as well as a challenge whether they would convert themselves in real sense and self-corrective measures can they adopt with all guts? Can they radically change themselves to become Bharat Parastha as well as Garib Parastha? It's to be seen. Nobody has to give certificates for this. Only their sensitivity and activity about these issues may make them credible force. It's up to them to choose and decide.